Uh, hi everyone, this is Miss Anna from the Ellersburg Library. Um, I'm in Exploration Point at the library right now. Um, I'm the only person in here, which is why I don't have my mask on. Um, but I am here with another YA book talk. Um, I've done a few of these already. Um, about a month ago I think I did one, and I did some like early on and while we were all home like a thousand years ago. Um, but I decided just to vary things up from doing mostly STEM programs, I would do another video where I recommend a few YA titles. And just for the fun of it, um, rather than just recommending a bunch of things, I want to do some kind of cool theme for this one. So I don't know about you guys, but I watch a lot of videos about books on YouTube, or on BookTube, as it's often called. And I was like, what if I use a format from one of these videos to do a book recommendation video for work? And I'm going to, I found something, I'm going to do a book tag. Um, people who watch a lot of BookTube might remember these. They're not as popular as they used to be. But it's essentially, rather than just recommending a bunch of books, I'm going to follow a list of prompts that I've got from here on my phone. Um, and I'm going to follow this list of prompts which all go with a theme. I found one that was library themed and I figured that was perfect. So I am going to use these prompts as a basis for my recommendations and go ahead and suggest some books. And since this is um, a teen book talk, I'm going to say all these books are 10th grade and older. I'll give a little disclaimer if it's something that I recommend definitely for older or if it's okay for younger people. Um, there are going to be a couple of kids or middle grade books. But with that said, let's get started. I will also include a link to the original video um, on YouTube that I found with this book tag in it. So you guys can watch it and give credit where it's due. Um, it is mostly adult books, so please only older readers. But um, just figured I'd include it. So the first prompt on this book tag is Information Desk, a book that helps you for any reason. And for this one, um, I don't know if you have a copy of it. Um, that's going to be the case for a lot of these. But this is what the cover looks like. I'm going with Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Oh, you cannot see that. The cover looks like this. So Fangirl is about a girl named Kath, and she's in her first year of college. And it kind of just follows her through this first year. It's kind of hard to describe the plot. But a major part of the story is that she's very involved in the fan base for this book series. That's essentially... And it feels weird calling this now, I'll explain why, but it's like a copyright free Harry Potter. And the author actually took this book series and made it into like a real series. If you read Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, which is one of my all time favorites. So the main character, Kath, is a huge fan of these books. And she's actually um, the author of a fan fiction that's extremely well known in the fan base. But nobody knows that she's the author except for her sister. And. She wants to keep it that way because she is dealing with anxiety in many aspects of her life. And the book touches on anxiety very respectfully. Um, it's a major part of the story. And it just kind of follows this character as she navigates through her first year of college, explores her relationship with her twin sister. There's a romance that is just super cute. And it's kind of just one of those stories that just follows a character through a time. It's really hard to describe other than that. But this was like, I read it right before I went to school, right before I went to college. And it, I relate it to the main character so hard. And I just found the book so relatable. And I think that really helped me with my, um, personally, going through my first year of college as I read about the character doing it. If that is something that you'd be interested in, a book that's very relatable, I highly recommend Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. And that's the cover again. Alright, so the next prompt is Return Bin, or two books that you really disliked and wanted to return as soon as you finished or did not finish them. And actually, I feel like I probably shouldn't be doing a um, like anti-recommendation on a book talk video. So I'm going to take some creative liberties and alter this a little bit to be two books that it's unpopular opinions. Books that a lot of people have um, talked about not liking, but I kind of like anyway. So the first, uh, for lack of a better word, unpopular opinion book I'm going to share is um, Don't Judge Me But I Like the Selection. Um, this is the fifth book. This is what the first book looks like, The Selection by Kira Cast. 
And the premise is it's a future version of America that now has a royal family and like a very rigid caste system. And whenever um, it is time that the prince is going to get married, the prince of this royal family. So it's a tradition in this world now that a girl is chosen from each province to compete in the selection which is a kind of a competition where they all move to the palace and um, all compete in a series of interviews and events and all sorts of things like that and are eliminated eventually. And eventually the winner of the selection will marry the prince and eventually become the queen of this country. So it is, in a nutshell, the dystopia bachelor. <laughs> And the main character is um, chosen from her province, and she's of a much lower social class than most of the other girls. And it just kind of follows her as she gets to know the prince and navigates like the politics of the palace. And the reason this is kind of an unpopular opinion is because most of the time it's just, it has a lot of cliches. People say it's like dumb. Again, it literally is The Bachelor, but in a dystopia. But it is so fun. It is the most addictive book series. It's three books. Um, this is the fifth book. Again, I just wanted to prompt. Um, the first three are the best. But if you like books that are just a real fun, cheesy time, and very, very addictive, like you will want to know what happens, I highly recommend the selection series. Um, I forgot to mention that if you do want to get these books digitally so you don't have to go outside, um, Fangirl is available as an audiobook on Libby, which is a website, or, um, an app, excuse me, that you can access through the library that you can enter a queue to read the audio, to, um, check out and listen to the audiobook. Um, Grim Lovelies and its sequel, it's a two book series, I don't know if there's a third one coming out, but they're both available on Hoopla as ebooks, and, and the selection is available on audio on Hoopla which is another app similar to Libby. It's an app and a website that you can enter your library card and um, download ebooks, audiobooks. They have some movies and stuff like that. Um, I use them all the time. I'll include a link about Hoopla in the Facebook post. So the next prompt is Hold Shelf, your most anticipated release. So as far as the releases go, this is much less a recommendation and more me rambling. It's mostly series. Um, of course, um, I mentioned that I love Carry On by Rainbow Rowell. I'm really waiting for the third book in that series, which I think is Anyway the Wind Blows, because it left such a cliffhanger on Wayward Sun. Um, really looking forward to um, Lost Book of the White, the latest Shadowhunter book. I love that series, Mortal Instruments, and it's assorted spinoffs, the Shadowhunter cinematic universe. Um, I think Sky Beyond the Storm is what it's called, the um, next book in the Ember and the Ashes series, that's another fantastic one, um, if you're looking for a darker um, high fantasy book. And it is Community Rooms and Study Areas, a book you read for class. So I read a lot of books for class because I was a literature major. Um, if you're looking for a classic, I had to read Frankenstein twice, and it's actually really good. It, it, um, it's very different than any like pop culture depiction. It makes you think. It's a good book. I'm trying to think of something that's like a fun throwback. Like what I read in elementary school that I can recommend to you guys. Okay, I've got one. Um, this is The Secret of Platform 13 by Eva Ibbotson. I had to read this for my required reading in fifth grade and it is such a cute book. Um, anything by Eva Ibbotson is just super fun. Very, like, pleasant and wholesome. Um, she reads a lot of ghost books, but not, like, scary ones. Or she wrote a lot. Um, all of her books are kind of older. I think they're from, like, the 80s and 90s and were republished in the 2000s. So the premise of this book is that there's an abandoned railway platform in London. And every nine years, for nine days, a door opens on this railway platform that leads to this magical island. It's just very peaceful and beautiful. Has, like, a good royal family. And I don't remember why, because it's been a solid, like, ten years since I read this. Um, but one year, there's a new baby prince, and um, the prince's, like, caretakers take him out into London for a brief time. And in this time, 
um, this woman who wants a child, like, abducts the baby, and they can't do anything about it for nine years. So, because the door closes. So nine years later, a team of these magical people are sent out to find the missing prince of this island before the door can close again. And that's about the, like, any more would be, like, a spoiler. It's, like, a very eccentric team of, like, magical people. Like, there's a wizard. I think there's someone with, like, plant magic. Like, this is an all-ages book. Um, I said, like, 10th grade and up, but it's very much an all-ages book. Uh, if you're also looking for, like, a throwback or something that's just very nice and pleasant, um, lots of, like, cool fantasy stuff and magic, um, Secret of Platform 13 is a great one. And I wanted to find something that I'd read for class that wasn't, like, a standard classic for this book book recommendation video of uh, Platform 13 is available as audio on Hoopla. Next up is Computers, which is a new sci-fi fave. So for a new sci-fi fave, I want to talk about Heart, Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. Um, this is the second book. I just wanted a prop here. This is what the first book looks like. And Heart of Iron is essentially um, Anastasia in space. Um, not the actual history, it's much closer to the animated movie and Broadway musical, but it's, um, pretty much years and years, like, I think it's in the future, it's a sci-fi space setting that, um, this girl was found as a child just di drifting in a space pod with only an android with her and was adopted by this group of space pirates, which is of course always cool. And um, years later, this girl has grown up, she's 17 years old, and she's looking for a way to fix the android who was left with her in this ship because the android has grown to become her best friend. And she ends up um, becoming entangled in this plot to find this map that has the coordinates to something that could change the world. And it's really hard to describe without any spoilers, but she becomes somehow discovers that she's involved with like the royalty of this space world and the nobility, which is where the Anastasia but in space comes in. Um, there's a lot going on in this series, it's hard to describe, but if you like um, space books, if you like, um, if you're a person who likes fantasy and hasn't really done like sci-fi, but you want to kind of hedge into it, this one's like a good gateway. It's more like fantasy tropes, but in the space setting. Um, you've got space. Um, it's just a really fun series. Um, this is the first book again, Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston. And I want to say it's available on Hoopla um, as an audiobook. Okay, so next up is DVD section, your favorite recent book adapted to a movie or a cinematic book in general. What has been made into a movie? Feels like about a thousand years since I've been to a movie theater. Everyone knows this one, but I'm going with To All the Boys I've Loved Before and P.S. I Still Love You by Jenny Han. And, God, it feels like a thousand years ago now, but the adaptation of book two, P.S. I Still Love You, came out on Netflix in February, I think? So it is, like, the most recent book adaptation movie I can think of. So To All the Boys I Loved Before is the first book. And it's about a girl named Lara Jean, and whenever she develops feelings for a guy, she writes these feelings down in a letter that she never intends to send. It helps her to deal with these feelings, um, especially because it's often like crushes that she doesn't want to act on. But then one day she finds that all of these letters have been sent, and now all of these um, boys that she wrote letters to have like received these letters about her feelings. and. Because one of these um, guys is her sister's recently ex-boyfriend, she develops an arrangement with another one of the guys that they're going to start fake dating so that he can make his, I think, ex-girlfriend jealous and she can avoid the implication that she has feelings for her sister's ex-boyfriend. And, of course, it's a romance book, so you can figure where it goes from there. But it is literally such a feel-good series. I, I love fake dating trope. It's very popular right now, but I just don't get enough of it. Um, if you're looking for something that's just very, like, pleasant and, like, a fun feel-good series, um, this is a great one. It's three books in all, and all of them are very solid books. And I think the third book's getting adapted into a movie, too. I don't know when. 
next up is book sale a book you knew nothing about but enjoyed anyway one i'm going to go with stargazing by jen wing um this is a graphic novel um it's one of the battle of the book books this year i read this one recently and i really loved it it's about um, two girls, um, Christine and Moon, and, um, Moon and her mother recently moved into a house on Christine's family's property, and they actually start, like, becoming friends, they start, like, interacting with each other, and it's just kind of one of those books that follows along with two characters as their friendship develops, and it talks about their relationships with family, and... It's not one of those ones that's hard to describe because it's very much just following these characters through their daily lives. Um, it's a graphic novel with really good, um, it's very colorful. I really love the illustration style. If you want a book that's like just a good exploration of friendship, I think the characters are in middle school. So it is definitely, this is another one that I'd say it's, it's appropriate for like younger middle school and up. Um, but if you're looking for just a fun contemporary, this is a great one, Stargazing by Jen Wang. So next up is Children's or Teen Room, and that is a book you want to share with your future children or child relatives. And I'm going with my favorite childhood book for this one, um, which is Ella Enchanted by Gail Carson Levine. This one's also a classic. I don't have it in print, but here's what it looks like. And Ella Enchanted is a Cinderella retelling, but it's a really unique one. Um, the premise is that the main character, Ella, was... Um, as a child, a fairy came to her birth and gave her the gift of obedience, which means that she is now magically compelled that whenever someone tells her to do something, she is magically compelled to do it. No matter whether it would cause her or someone else harm, um, she has to do it like magically. And so after a series of events that occur in the book, she decides to track down this fairy in order to get her to undo, undo the gift. And it is like a classic for a reason it's such a good book it's been a long long time since i read it um i like telling the story that i read it i think eight times in a row in fifth grade i read it so many times that my teacher literally told me i had to pick a different book for my free reading um but yeah if you're looking for just uh, this is another one that's really appropriate i read it in like fourth and fifth grade um it's an all ages book um, if you're looking for just a really fun childhood throwback book, Ellen Enchanted is just a classic. I love everything this author's written. She's written some really fantastic, like, kids' fantasy. Next prompt is Museum Tickets, a book that made you feel more cultured after you read it. And for this, I'm thinking, like, a book that helped me learn something. Um, I don't read a lot about, like, art. I don't even read a lot of historical fiction. But I'm going to think of a book that really made me feel as if I learned something about the world or about history. And I'm going to go with something that I just audiobooked, um, Pulp by Robin Talley. I'm bringing up the cover now because we don't have it in print here. This is what it looks like. And this is a book, it's told, a uh, um, standalone book. It's told from two perspectives. The first is a girl in the present day who lives in Washington, D.C., um, and she is a, doing a project on lesbian pulp novels from the 1950s, and she likes girls herself. The character of Pulp by Robin Talley is doing a project where she writes her own version of one of these novels, and she discovers this book that was very popular among not straight women in the 50s. And, but the author wrote this one book and was never heard from again. And this girl decides to make it her mission to find out what happened to this author. And then in the other timeline of the book, um, it, you read the story of the girl who went on to write this famous novel and who was a um, young girl in the 50s, a teenage girl, discovering that she likes women in the time of McCarthyism, in a time where that was just she would have been like thrown out of her family it's it's very sad due to these things um do that part of the timeline there is a lot of sad elements to this um major trigger warning for um a major content warning for historical time period based homophobia like period typical homophobia um i promise it's not a super super sad book um but it is fantastic i learned so much about history that 
um, history of a marginalized group that I never knew before I read this book. Um, it is, I would say, it is one that I'm going to recommend for older YA teen readers just due to some of the content. Um, I'm going to say it's like an 11th grade and up book. But I learned so much about history from this book, about time period I hadn't read much about. It's definitely one that I highly recommend. Alright, next up is Overdrive, Livy, or Hoopla, a audiobook that you really enjoyed. And I have a go-to for this one. It is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Um, this is a very dark book, I'll warn you. This is definitely like an older teens, I'd say 11th grade and up. Um, it is a alternate history fantasy where during the Battle of Gettysburg, essentially the zombie apocalypse happened. The dead started to rise. And from that point, it like diverges from the Civil War history. And then years later, I think it takes place in the 1870s, um, the United States has evolved, or not really evolved, but has become a place where zombie outbreak has been mostly contained, but is still a major problem. And young women of color are often sent to schools where they learn how to fight the dead in order to act as bodyguards for wealthy families. And the main character is one of these girls, and she goes to school to learn how to fight the zombies. And she and a classmate and a friend end up becoming involved. They discover this conspiracy um, with some family, some wealthy families, and with major political figures and with the zomb involving the zombies and it all unfolds from there. Same much else would be a spoiler, but this book is amazing. It's very, very dark. Like lots of blood and gore. Please you weren't going in. A lot there's lots of it's a, the period typical racism is scarier than the zombies. But it goes into a lot of history that isn't often taught in schools. Um, it gets a lot of, there's a lot of stuff you learn about history in this as much as you get the fantasy stuff. There's two main female characters, and the dynamic, the friendship between those two characters is one of the best I've ever seen written. And if you listen to the audiobook, um, there's two books in the series. The second book is called Deathless Divide. And if you listen to them both, they're both on Hoopla, I believe, it feels like you've watched two seasons of a TV show. Like, it is, you can picture it clearly. And it, the variation is super good. So if you're looking for something that's a bit heavier and like high concept, this is a fantastically written series. Really well written characters. It's pretty dark, but I really enjoyed it and highly recommend the series. I keep forgetting to tell you guys where you can read these, but Pulp, the audiobook, is available on Hoopla. And Dread Nation is available in audio on Hoopla, and so is its sequel. And all of these you can put on hold at CCPL. Right, next up is Request to Purchase, a book that you think more people should know about, um, Daughter of the Burning City by Amanda Foody. This is a standalone fantasy novel, which is rare in YA. It is one of my favorite books, and nobody talks about it. So Daughter of the Burning City takes place in this fantasy world, and it takes place in... They call it a circus, but it's essentially this enormous traveling city. It's this huge festival that goes from sta like stationary city to city, it's enormous. All the people who live there travel from place to place, and they're all performers. It's a, it's described as a circus city, and a lot of them have some sort of magic. Um, to say it's kind of spoilery to say it's give details because it's a great book to just go into and like go into a lot of it blind. But the main character is a girl named Serena, and she is the adopted daughter of the proprietor of the circus city. And she has this ability to create, she calls them illusions. But if she comes up with like a person or a, like a character, she can bring them to life. So she's kind of created this whole family of illusions um, who are the performers in her act of the circus. And they also act as her family members. But one day she finds that one of these illusions has been murdered. And she did not think that was possible because they're not technically real people. So now they, she has to figure out who is trying to kill off all of her family members before they can kill again. And the setting of this book is just so cool. The characters are really well written. It has a fantastic audiobook. Last I checked it was on Hoopla. Um, if you're looking for a fantasy that is just super unique, very atmospheric, very cool magic system, highly recommend Dark the Burning City. Um, Ace of Shades by the Amanda Foodie is also fantastic. It's another one that I highly recommend. 
Right, next up is Librarian, a book with a character that likes helping people. And I went and looked out at the shelves, and I think it's just because it's been on my mind because I spent the whole beginning of the quarantine watching the anime version, and then now I'm working through the manga. But I just, my brain just went to My Hero Academia, which is a manga series, and it has an anime as well. This is not the first volume, this is like volume 10, but I just grabbed the first one I saw on the shelf. And My Hero Academia is... A series set in a world where pretty much 80% of the population, I think, has some sort of superpower. It's weirder to not have one than it is to have a superpower. And so becoming a superhero is like a profession that people can train to become a superhero and essentially become celebrities. And um, there's a school where kids become part of this hero course to learn how to be superheroes. And this is what volume one looks like. But the main character starts out as one of the 20% in this world who do not have the superpowers. And through things that I will not explain here because spoilers, it's one that's really fun to just go into. He ends up going to this school to learn how to become a superhero. And there's all these great characters. It's just super fun. Um, I won't claim that it's a perfect series. Um, if you've read it or watched the anime, you know what I mean when I say I wish it did better by its female character sometimes. But the main character is just so endearing and just wants to help people. Really great main character that I thought fit this prompt well. It's just popped in my brain. Um, just It's also, I've been reading this series um, over the quarantine, so it's just also fresh in my mind. But if you're um, if you're like me and you like comics and graphic novels a lot and you're just starting to get into manga, this is a really great like gateway series. Um, especially if you're already into superhero stuff like the Marvel or DC. It has a lot of really great side characters, really unique superpowers. It's just a really fun time. Um, so I recommend it. I would say this is like a 15, 16 year old plus series. It's just a great time. And the last prompt is Sanctuary, a book that helped you through a tough time. And this is another one that's a little personal for a fun library book talk video, but I'm going to go with one that I read in college when I was like really stressed out and it was like a great distraction just because it was such a fantastic book. This is another one of my all-time favorites. It's Six of Crows by Leah Bardugo. If you read a lot of YA, you've definitely heard of this one. Um, it's a spin-off of her Shadow and Bone series, but you don't have to have read it first. I actually read this one first. Um, you'll understand it just fine. And this is a book that set, I think it's like a Victorianish time period in like a fantasy version of Amsterdam and it's takes place in this world where some people have like these magical abilities that are explained better in the book than I could explain here but it's a fantasy novel but rather than being like a chosen one story or preventing the end of the world or anything like that it's a heist novel set in a fantasy world it's about these groups of characters who are all involved in like this criminal organization and they are hired in order to pull a heist and it's just you get these six characters um this video is already like so exponentially long so i won't go into each character even though i could talk about them for like hours but you have these six main characters who are all extremely well written, all have like developed backstories, and you get to see them like interact as they do this mission. It is just such a fun book. There is like some content, like look up reviews first because there is some like potentially triggery content. It is a bit of a darker book, but it's just the character interactions are fantastic. The fantasy aspects are great. And I just could not recommend that book enough. But the video is also getting super long. So I'm going to end it there. Thank you for watching this video. Please feel free to go ahead and like answer these questions yourself in the comments. I think that's like a really fun way to um, respond to book tag videos is to put your own answers in the tags. Or um, in the tags, excuse me. Um, in the comments. If you've read any of these books, you check any of them out, like talk about that in the comments. And I hope you all had fun watching this video. It was really fun to make. And I hope you found a book that you'd like. So thank you for tuning in and have a great day. Bye.